Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tuesday tip where in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to tell whether or not a BMX bike is a piece of junk before you buy it. So the title on this one might be a little bit harsh, but I see so much misinformation going around on the internet and so many people asking questions of, is this bike worth this price? And they're asking about bikes from people who are trying to sell their complete bikes from five years ago for the price that they paid for them when they very clearly been ridden. And so I wanted to make this video in hopes that it would prevent at least one person from overspending or being completely ripped off when buying a BMX bike. And there are very obvious difference between a BMX bike like this one, for example, and a bike that you might find at Walmart that is labeled a BMX bike. This isn't a video talking about those differences. The differences that I'm going to be talking about are ones that might not be so obvious to someone who is just getting into BMX and just wants to buy their first legit BMX bike. Because upon first glance to someone who is just getting started, the two might appear very similar when in reality they are two very, very different bikes held to two very, very different standards. And this is really important, especially when it comes to safety. So to start this one out, we're going to be talking about the absolute easiest ways to tell that a bike is at the lower end of the spectrum. And of those, the most apparent and obvious lies in the bottom bracket. Any modern brand name BMX bike made in the past few years that contains an American unsealed bottom bracket or a one piece crank setup is without a shadow of a doubt at the lowest of the low end of their complete bike spectrum. So with that being said, I've already showed examples of American unsealed bottom brackets with three piece and one piece crank setups. And now you're seeing on the screen a mid bottom bracket with a three piece crank setup. Any bike that you might be looking at with a mid bottom bracket on it is a surefire way to tell that that bike is at least not at the lowest of the low end of the spectrum. While the bottom bracket is the most obvious indicator of quality on a BMX bike, we can move to the front of the bike to see a a little bit less obvious indicator, but also something that if you know what you're looking for, you can definitely tell when a bike is of lower quality. And that is the type of headset bearings and setup of the headset on the bike. So on lower end complete bikes, they usually come with press in cups for unsealed or sealed bearings to come into. Usually on the low end, it's an unsealed bearing setup. The difference between this and an integrated headset setup, like the one that's on this bike here, is that on the integrated setup, the place for the bearings to go is actually machined into the head tube of the bike. And while this might sound complicated to some of you, there is a very easy way to tell whether or not a frame that you're looking at is integrated or has these press in cups. And that is just by looking at this area on the frame, a frame that has the press in cups or an unsealed headset has a very obvious break in the frame where something was pushed in. Whereas a frame with an integrated headset has no obvious breaks in it. And it's just a cleaner look where you can tell that this frame was made to have something put into the head tube on it. And hopefully the pictures that I'm showing on the screen have given you a better illustration of this and an understanding for it. From there, we can move back to the bottom bracket area to the sprocket of the bike. A sprocket on a bike is another possible indicator of quality because complete bikes at the lower end of the spectrum often come with very thin steel sprockets on them. So if you're looking at a bike and it has a very thin sprocket that appears to be steel, the difference between aluminum and steel is usually visually apparent and the thinness of the sprocket is a dead giveaway on this one. Aluminum sprockets are usually five to seven millimeters thick and then a steel sprocket is something like three millimeters thick. And like I said, it's just very obvious. And those are the three most obvious indicators of quality on a BMX bike. But when it comes to these things, it all comes down to the cost. At the price point of $100 or less, you really don't have to worry a ton about these things because under $100, it's usually going to be worth it unless the bike is completely ridden into the ground and destroyed already. But this is something that you don't need me to tell you how to figure out. It's pretty clear and obvious. And quite honestly, I would never pay more than 75 
to $100 for a bike that has an unsealed headset or an unsealed American bottom bracket or a one piece crank and a steel sprocket on it because more often than not there are better deals out there for the same or just a little bit more money as long as you know what you're looking for so when it comes to that hundred dollar price point when we're going above that and you have checked all of the boxes it has an integrated headset it has a mid bottom bracket it has an aluminum sprocket above a hundred dollars you can check a few more things we won't go super far into detail with them but I have them for you right now. The first and probably most important of these things that just barely didn't make the top list is whether or not the bike has sealed hubs on it. And if you're new to this, you might not know what sealed hubs look like on a BMX bike. So hopefully these pictures can give you a little bit more clarity. And this is another thing that comes into play with price. If you're talking about that $100 price mark and you're talking about an unsealed hub on that bike, you're really not losing out on too much because you're not spending a ton of money, definitely under that $100 mark. But on the flip side, if you're spending around $100 and you're getting a bike that has sealed front and rear hubs, you know that you're getting a better value. And that's why it's important to take a look at these things. Two smaller things that you can take a look at that aren't totally guaranteed because they're easy to switch out are the seat and the tires. When it comes to the seat on lower end complete bikes, they will usually go with a seat and seat post combo that are connected together with no adjustment for obvious reasons and cost savings. And then when it comes to tires, lower end complete bikes will have tires that can accept lower tire pressures. So if you're looking at the tires on a bike and it says something like 35 to 50 PSI, you're usually looking at a lower quality tire, which could be an indicator of lower quality parts on the bike. So if this is something that you see, you might just want to take a look at other aspects of the bike. And once again, at those lower price ranges, you really don't have to be quite as picky. And on the flip side, again, if you see tires that say 110 PSI on a bike that someone's only asking $100 for, you know that it has a higher quality tire on it, and that's just a better value for your money. So that's it for the specific parts and other indicators of quality that you can look at on a BMX bike. But there's one other thing that we haven't quite talked about yet, and that is the difference between having aftermarket and brand name parts on a bike and having the lower quality brand name parts on a bike. Just like the other things that I've talked about, this isn't really set in stone because anyone can change out any part on a BMX bike and someone could put the absolute best cranks on an unsealed American bottom bracket with an unsealed headset and it could mean absolutely nothing. But if you're looking at a bike and you see huge brand names all over the parts on the bikes that are actually stamped into the part and not just a sticker on it, then that could be an indicator that a lot of the parts are aftermarket or of higher quality on the complete bike that was bought. And that could be another way to tell that you're getting a better value for your money. So for example, higher end complete bikes sometimes come with the brand name parts from that company on them. One great example of this is that there are some Sunday complete bikes that come with the Odyssey Clutch Free Coaster on it, which is a $200 or more wheel, but they come on a complete bike that is like $450, $500. And with that, you know that you're getting a better value for that bike because you could sell that hub and make half of the money from the bike back. I feel like it's like sagging towards me. It's definitely sagging towards me. I don't have it tight enough. Okay, I had to fix it and I noticed that the microphone was filled up so if there was a change in audio, I'm sorry, it's good now. But as I was saying, this isn't set in stone but it's definitely something that you want to keep an eye out for whenever you're looking at a complete BMX bike to buy. And when it comes to buying a whole BMX bike, you usually aren't going to want to spend the amount that someone paid for a bike unless it's brand new and you absolutely have to have it because the value goes down as soon as someone rides something and there's usually much better deals out there where you can get a custom bike that has mostly aftermarket parts on it or all aftermarket parts for a very good price. 
this guide was more for the person who's looking at buying a complete bike that might be used and doesn't know quite exactly what they're looking at yet. So hopefully it helped you. Let me know if it did in the comments down below. I hope that I saved at least one person from overspending or getting ripped off by someone on the internet. And with that being said, if you guys bought your bikes on the internet used and you are comfortable talking about it, let us know what you bought and how much you paid for it. Seems like a great way to start a conversation down there in the comments. If you did enjoy this video and you're new here, hit the subscribe button down below. I make tips and tricks videos just like this one every Tuesday, as well as BMX news videos on Fridays and other types of riding videos and streams throughout the week. I wanna thank you guys for being here and watching and I sincerely hope that this video at least helps someone because it was a nightmare to make. And with that, thank you again for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for another video. Goodbye.